Først vil jeg sige tak til Sveriges Naturskyttsforening for invitationen at deltage i denne event. Og gratis til forfatterne med bogen. Jeg ser frem til at læse den. Og øh, dernæst vil jeg sige, at I kan høre på min accent, at jeg ikke er svensk. Øh, jeg er dansk, men har øh, jobbet snart fire år i Sverige. So I'm gonna continue in English with my presentation. So uh, I have uh, chosen to uh, try to give uh, a description of how it's possible possible to use organic farming and agroecology in the sustainable development of uh, food systems for the future. But As any commercial company, uh, I also have a, a small advertisement about what we are doing. Uh, I work in Swedish University of Agricultural Science in the southern campus uh, between Malmö and Lund. And uh, I'm also head of department of agrosystems in, uh, in this faculty uh, south of Sweden. And our main uh, task in this department is to work for development, management and assessment of multifunctional and sustainable cropping system. Uh, keep in mind these two words, multifunctional and sustainable, uh, for producing healthy and high quality food, feed, as well as bios biomass for a uh, bio-based economy within organic and conventional agriculture. Of course, uh, a main issue when we work in a university is teaching, but of course we also disseminate what we are doing, like today and in uh, research papers, and uh, even has tasks in innovation with uh, different sectors having interest in agricultural system. In our teaching, uh, I'm very proud to say that this year we had the third group of agroecology students started, starting uh, in Alnab. Uh, we have now, uh, uh, since it must be 2010, uh, taken students from all over the world, having interest to follow a two-year master program in agroecology, uh, having focus on small-scale farmers, as we already heard today, And uh, besides this uh, program, which is developed together with universities in Ethiopia and Uganda, we also teach other courses related to organic farming and sustainable soil management uh, and, and so on, having importance for sustainable uh, development of agriculture. Our students, as you can see below, they are from almost all over the world following the uh, two-year master program in agriculture. So I will uh, start saying a few things about challenges and recommendations, uh, focusing on the report which Hervé already mentioned. And I would like to repeat, for those of you having interest in a sustainable development of agriculture, this report is probably one of the most important for you to know. This is the short version. You can have a much thicker report, which is the global report, but I can recommend this is a very valuable document if you want to know more about what can we actually do to enhance food production with less environmental impact. Okay, <laughs> super. Yeah. Then I would like to say a, 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 a little bit about uh, that the main paradigm is that we need to in intensify our production and to give two concepts of uh, intensification of agriculture to produce more uh, from, from the same amount of land. I will quickly say something about agroecology and organic agriculture, since I assume most of you are aware about principles of organic agriculture, but more to give you my uh, thinking on what is agroecology. Then I will try to be more specific, uh, to give some examples how we can use one agroecological method which is used in, uh, in, in organic farming, which is used in farmers practicing agroecological method, and this is crop diversification. Uh, by giving some examples uh, of 
uh, what we also call eco-functional intensification, which is one of the two concepts of int intensification which I mentioned earlier. Then a little bit about future development and conclusions. Very briefly, we already heard a lot about the challenge. I listed here uh, some challenge for global agriculture. Uh, of course, uh, when we are talking about uh, food supply for the future, security is important, but also sovereignty, that uh, it should be possible for all of us to be able to select or produce the food our, uh, we, we think is important for us. Uh, so, uh, it's not only about food security, but also what kind of food each of us actually have access to. Climate change, yes, clean water. We need to reduce the amount of uh, agrochemicals in agriculture. Uh, we must have health, healthy and safe quality food. We need to think about f future energy supply uh, and also non-renewable resources like phosphorus. We must consider still to work in uh, preserving our biodiversity. And we are also facing a world with more and more globalization and trade, uh, which also needs to be considered in this context. And rural development, both in a European context and also in other parts of the world. So what to do? How to handle all these challenges? And it's here this uh, report come up with some suggestion. This report has prompted a series of other reports from UNEP uh, and other organizations about how can we increase food production or agricultural production in a sustainable way, producing more with less environmental impact. This is the paradigm. And what is the suggestion from agriculture at crossroads? This uh, I a A S T D report, uh, which uh, is here. It has some recommendation. First of all, uh, it's important to have more focus on diversity of farming systems. We must work with multifunctionality of crops and systems, meaning agriculture must supply more function than one. One function is producing food, feed, uh, energy, fiber. That's one fu function of producing something. But if we are going to handle all the challenge, we need agriculture to be able to deliver more service, like taking care of drinking water so it's uh, clean and free of pesticide, uh, like uh, helping in reducing climate change. Otherwise, we'll, we will not be able to handle all the long list of challenge which uh, we have in the society. So multifunctionality of agriculture and even the cropping systems are very important for the future. We must improve the use of nutrients, energy, and water in order to be able to have enough uh, natural resources for producing the food. And finally, uh, one of the main uh, recommendations is that we must support agroecological systems uh, in producing food and other products and delivering other services to society. So the key question is, how can we produce more with less environmental impact and preserving uh, ecosystem services? Then, after uh, this report had come up, uh, there has been several ideas, suggestions on how we can actually achieve producing more with less environmental impact. One is termed sustainable intensification which has been published uh, in a report from, from the Royal Society in UK and also in science, saying that we have plenty of knowledge today which is not used. So in our uh, existing system around the world, if we use more of this knowledge, we can actually produce more, and we also have knowledge to reduce some of the costs uh, 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 and some of the environmental negative impacts which we know are associated with agricultural production, also from existing knowledge. They specifically, when they talk about sustainable intensification, also indicate that we can reduce, for instance, greenhouse gas emissions by changing agricultural practice. And they suggest a diverse uh, uh, set 
of uh, new ways of uh, having uh, new thinking on agronomic practices like integrated pest management, agroforestry, less plowing of the soil, precision farming cover crops, and so on. So this is one way to say we have knowledge, we can improve our existing systems by uh, applying this knowledge we don't use today and produce more with less environmental impact. Another suggestion is called ecofunctional intensification. And uh, this has been uh, defined by the EU uh, platform called TP Organics, means technical uh, platform organics, which is an association of uh, different organizations working with organic agriculture in Europe. They suggest that uh, when, when uh, we should try to produce more uh, with less environmental impact, also that we have to take care that much of the knowledge we already have is actually activated. And we should try to uh, rely more on ecosystem service, including biodiversity and soil fertility. But also they say that if you're working with ecofunctional intensification, the self-regulating mechanisms of organisms and uh, of biological or uh, organi organizatorial systems are important and to close material cycle, as it was mentioned earlier here today. And it searches for a, bed, a best match between in my environmental variation and genetic variability of plant and crops, meaning that more local development or system is required, that we cannot use the same method all over the world, but we have maybe to go even to the individual farm to consider the sustainable uh, development of multifunctional uh, food systems. So what is agriculture? Now I mentioned this a few times and during the lunch I talked to, uh, to some out there. We said uh, we need to mo know more about this work, agriculture. And I already mentioned that we have a two-year master program at SLU uh, on agriculture. And uh, agriculture means that we have the interest of studying whole food systems, uh, including, including both uh, environmental or ecological uh, factors, economic and social dimensions. But the whole system being in a region involves several farms, landscape, environment, and the society, and all the different interactions in there. Because if we want to develop what's going on in the farm, it's very essential that we have the knowledge about all these interactions including human beings, which are those which take decision at the farm or take decision at the dinner table in the evening what they eat. So it's very important to know about these interactions if we want to develop more sustainable agriculture. And uh, in a in, uh, in, in scientific article, it has also been said that uh, if we look at the farming system, this is to develop the farming system uh, using principles of ecology, from the science of ecology, uh, involving landscape, community, bioregion, and emphasizing on the uniqueness of place, like I mentioned before. We cannot use the same solution everywhere, and the people and other species that are part of this region. So this is the overall definition. So when we say agroecology and agroecological method, there's no certification like we have Krav, like we have the EU label, uh, but a thinking that we should use uh, the uh, mechanisms of nature in developing the future system, and that we try to look and understand the whole food system. Then I probably don't need to say much about organic agriculture, uh, but uh, just to emphasize here, I took the, a short version of the I form definition of agriculture, but here to say that organic agriculture is based also like agriculture on ecological process, biodiversity, and cycle adapted to local condition. So you can hear it's very similar, but here we are often uh, considering, at least in a European context, that we have certified system. So in my perspective, organic uh, agriculture is a subset of agroecology, 
where agroecology can be much broad. In agroecology, an African farmer may have a fantastic use of using a small amount of uh, soluble phosphor fertilizer because the soil is so bad that it takes many, many years to improve soil fertility in order to be able to work uh, in organic uh, system. So this is just to uh, indicate what I mean when I say agroecology and organic agriculture. Then, uh, when we are working with agroecology and organic agriculture, there's two key uh, methods which I would like to highlight here. And uh, this is diversifying the cropping system in both time and space. Meaning, in time, that's over a year, that you don't grow the same crop on the same piece of land every year, that you have a shift of different type of crop and utilize this difference which are between different crops. In space means that you have, when you have diversity in space, that you can have different species growing among each other on the same piece of land and utilizing the interaction between the different species growing on the same piece of land. And another key issue is, of course, taking care of soil fertility and soil organic matter. This is the very basis of agroecological method and of organic farming. I could give a separate uh, talk about the later one, but today I will say a little bit more specific about uh, crop diversification and using this as a mean to enhance the production of food within a specific unit of area. So if we see this from a theoretical point of view, uh, typically we can, we can have a farmer uh, and the farmer will design the system, how and what to produce. And here it's very important to consider the so-called plant diversity. How can the farmer think in terms of having uh, uh, different elements in the farm, for instance, different crops within a crop rotation or within an intercrop or within an agroforestry system. So this is up to the farmer to take some uh, decision on how to plan the diversity of the farm. And not having uh, many hundreds of hectares of maize, as we saw from, was it Brazil, but considering to have a diverse uh, system on the farm. This diversity will be able to influence both that there will be more diversity with wildlife, with other beneficial insects, but the diversity is also the best issue to make more efficient use of ecosystem services from, uh, from the farming system. And even uh, uh, having more associated biodiversity can also promote that is, is uh, more easy to use ecosystem services. And then if we look in practice, how do we do it actually when we want to do this? And consider what I mentioned before as eco-functional intensification. When we have a cropping system, having different crops designed by the farmer, and we think in terms of agroecology, and we think in terms of crop diversification, then the idea is to say, how can we use uh, the knowledge we have from ecological science when we design this. And then it's possible oops, to use uh, different, different uh, mechanisms like competition between species, like facilitation, meaning that species can help each other when they are associated, like uh, com complementarity in how they use the resources, like symbiosis between some organisms, or chemical ecology. And uh, I was very happy, Heavy, that you already mentioned the push and pull. So I don't need to explain it because you did it in an excellent way. Because here we have many of these uh, ecological mechanisms functioning in the push and pull system, which is, which is very innovative and intel intelligent thinking. But then I want to uh, highlight two other examples of how we can diversify the cropping system uh, from a small-scale farmer in Uganda and then from a European context of intercropping where I did uh, 
many years of research uh, uh, on how to grow cereals and uh, protein crops like pea and beans together and see how this could benefit uh, agriculture, farmer economy uh, in organic systems. So, uh, just briefly, I visited this uh, farm, which is 35 kilometers outside uh, Kampala, and uh, I met uh, Mrs. I may need some help here, Semudo uh, Regina, uh, and her farm. <laughs> and uh, uh, she have these five acres, uh, which you can see here, some picture of uh, her cropping system on the five acres. And when we look more carefully, to her, her cropping system, all these different uh, plant species here were growing on the farm. At the same time, she had a few pigs, she had some chicken, and she also had one cow in her system. She raised uh, three children, which also all have a very good education. Unfortunately, her husband had died, which had very good education as teacher, nurse, and the third one was uh, ending high school from running this five hectare of very diverse production, but also giving uh, enough food for the family, and still she could also sell on the market some of her produce. And here, even then, from year to year, here you can ha see the, I think it's cassava or sweet, uh, that she knows also about when, when this year she had maize here, it's not good to have maize here, maize might move to another state, uh, place in the farm, in order to have diversity in time uh, or rotation, even in this complex system. So, uh, this fantastic lady knew about the principle of nature, how crops can work together in such complex system. And we can learn a lot of this. Many years ago, in a European setting, we have many systems, maybe not as complex as this uh, farm, but we were having a lot of intercropping with different plant species. But it has gone as we had more fossil energy, as we have pesticides involved in our system, we don't make use of these fantastic service that nature can supply having diverse crops. Then I switched to the European setting. I was in charge of a, fi uh, of a sorry, a, uh, it ended up being five years, but in the beginning a four year project uh, of how to grow uh, intercropping mixtures of grain legume like pea or barley and cereals in European organic farming. We were five countries, Denmark, UK, France, Germany and Italy. And here you see the, the result of such a, a study which run for three years. So each bar here is mean of three years. And you can see it shows here the green one. Here we have pea in, as grown as only pea. The white is uh, is the uh, barley grown as sole crop. And then here we have two different types of intercrop, meaning that we grow barley and pea together. And you can see here the green, of course, is the pea harvest, and the white is the barley harvest uh, in the different countries. And in most cases, you can see there's an advantage from uh, production in the total uh, yield of the crops. And here's the average for all three years in all five countries. And when this is evaluated, uh, it ends up giving about 20% advantage in crop production compared to growing the true crop as sole crop. This is, of course, interesting when farmers need to have both crop. Should the farmer grow them as sole crop and divide the land in two pieces, or should the two crops be grown together? If they are divided in two, you cannot make benefit of all the fantastic services due to crop di diversification. But when they are grown together, uh, there's a possibility to do that. <coughs> one thing here is very quickly to say, uh, one, when farmers are growing new crop, for instance, there's a high need to have more protein produced uh, for animal feed and human consumption uh, in organic agriculture. And farmers are reluctant to grow peas and beans because these crops are very risky. And is there a way we can do this also using diversity? And this slide shows, oops, this is still the wrong one. It shows about the yield variability over three years. 
And you can see here, the higher the column, the more uh, variability is in yield. So here, when we have P, it's very variable over, over three years. Uh, the cereal is less variable. But if you look at the two intercrops, two different combinations, it has the similar variability as the cereal. And if we take the overall mean of five countries in three years, you can see that here we have the variability of P, and here the variability of the cereal, and we have the intercrop here having it lower. So the farmer can produce protein in the intercrop with a lower risk than growing peas alone, which is very important for the farmer in terms of security. So if you look at the literature very carefully, all the research going on in intercropping, there's a long list which can be documented on what are the benefits of intercropping in a European setting of organic agriculture. I've listed these here, I cannot enter into all of them, but it's up to you if you want to enter deep, you're welcome to contact, uh, contact me about this, and I can give you some references for where we can make uh, the use of diversification of cropping system. But one thing is that we know a lot from research and development. The next step is farmers to use it, that the knowledge is activated. It's a very important step in, in, in this uh, uh, new uh, innovation, which is really not new, because Sweden was growing a lot of oats and pea for many, many, many years. Uh, but in a modern context, we can make use of this knowledge again. I took some uh, few slides here. We are coming to an end, okay, I, see, I can see. Uh, but this is uh, uh, some, some thinking on organic agriculture as a momenta for having sustainable development of uh, a food system. I tried, uh, from the knowledge I have, to rate these, uh, these uh, different uh, challenges we were talking about before. Where, where, where do I see from my knowledge, reading different reports, that we can benefit from uh, organic agriculture in the future? Some needs more development, some have enormous potential, and uh, I will not go through the whole list here, but just mention that there's area we need to do more research to ensure that if we want to make the benefit of organic agriculture, we al also need more research, uh, which hopefully can be in col collaboration with farmers in order to use the fantastic knowledge which is among many farmers in terms of having ideas and innovation for developing agricultural systems. And uh, I would also like to highlight one more book, is from ICROF, International Center for Research in Organic Farming System, uh, which published this book on the, on the global development of organic agriculture in 2006. Uh, probably you, some of you know as Helper, which was the main editor of the book. Uh, they list some important challenge here, not only in a European setting, but a global setting for organic agriculture, which we should try to focus on uh, in the future. Uh, it also says that, uh, for instance, like what already mentioned by Hervé and others, that uh, uh, non-certified organic agriculture have a, a enormous potential in many parts of the world actually to increase yield compared to the traditional method by farmers in these areas. But maybe most of all in some settings, in the European setting, is that we need to know more about how is actually the benefit for society of having organic agriculture? Because organic agriculture aims at trying to handle many goals at the same time. How can we evaluate some system trying to uh, do better in many goals and not only one goal, let's say producing more and having more income, but also want to be multifunctional, to help having cleaner drinking water to have more healthy food, uh, to reduce climate change, and so on. How can we evaluate that? This is a very essential thing for the future and the development of organic farming, that we can make such analysis of the value of the combined effect of an organic agricultural system. Finally, 
Uh, I have shown this picture before because uh, one of the reasons that I have been working with organic agriculture for many years is I th that I think that when we do research and development in organic agriculture, we will influence conventional agriculture uh, by having some people which do differently. And it's essential that we see if this is like the beautiful future of sustainable world. Uh, and we have, in a way here, we have conventional agriculture and organic agriculture. Hopefully, uh, we can think that organic agriculture being here, closer to sustainability, is able, in a way, to pull conventional in the right direction, like is shown here. But there's also a danger that, uh, that we have conventional to become more sustainable and organic to become more conventional, if we don't uh, think and try to ensure that uh, organic have possibility for developing further and improve sustainability for the future. And this is up to uh, all of you people which are here today and all others having interest in developing uh, organic food production. So increased food production from agricultural system with less environmental impacts are required, but I say which food for whom? We need to think about this. This is also not just about producing more. It's about diets, it's about equity, it's about distribution of the food we have. So the, this, it's not a very simple question uh, or simple uh, paradigm to say we must produce more. We need to have more definition of this. We can enhance food production by activating more existing knowledge and using eco-functional intensification, for instance, like using crop diversification by rotation, intercropping, or agroforestry, and agroecological method and organic agriculture offers a framework and principle as momentable for sustainable and multifunctional development of agricultural system. Tak så meget.